people was the target for the Skodathon. We have um, 26. This is really good. And what's more important is um, to make sure that we consistently, all of us, attend this uh, sixth session. That's what Ram Babu and uh, Kavita has planned, if I'm not wrong, uh, so that we learn together as a team. Uh, welcome everyone officially. My name is Kadar Khan for those who do not know me. Um, so I am a president and CEO of a Testopal community. And you might, most of you might know, and some you may not know what the Testopal community is. First of all, it's a nonprofit community. It is completely run by volunteers. So we have no full-time employees. And why do we exist is mainly because we are a tech community. We really wanted to encourage, you know, people to continuously learn. In nutshell, what we strongly believe is on five words, right? Uh, we use five words and we spin our mission, vision, and everything around these five words. So if you look at it at a very high level, right? Uh, what's happening in the industry today is there's, there's, you know, because of COVID and because of automation and a lot of many reasons, right? It, it becomes very important for all of us, including me and every volunteer who helps to run this Testoper organization as a nonprofit. Um, we all have a mandate and a need to make sure that we are always up to date with the skills that we have. And that's the only way that we can be relevant in the market and we can be successful in the market. So the Testoper community is all about helping each other, right? The Testoper community is all of us in this call or the Testoper community. Like I mentioned, it's a nonprofit. We have no full time employees. Today you join Testoper community means you are uh, owner of the Testoper community. So the goal is we all wanted to come together and um, work together, organize ourselves, govern ourselves so that we all can learn ourselves future skills and innovation. That is what Testoper community is all about. We focus on five keywords, right? So the first keyword that we focus on is future workforce. Our slogan is we wanted to really empower everyone to become a tech ecosystem future workforce. So what does future workforce mean? Future workforce means you have relevant skills so we can be relevant in the market. That's what future workforce means. And the future workforce is not about just only the skills, right? It is also about developing thinking differently standing out of out of the crowd. You know, there's a lot of doers in this world and, and you give them the task, they do it. But what's more important is we need people who are not just doers, but who are creators. And if you wanted to be relevant in this market, the future workforce, the word expectation of every individuals like you and me by the company is to have that innovative thinking. So if you want to become a future workforce, what does it mean? The second word, you have to develop your future skills and innovation. And if how can you develop future skills and innovation on the tech field? Only through the continuous learning. So continuous learning does not mean you have to go and get certificates and things like that. You might have seen there's a lot of people without college dropouts and many other people have been really successful. It's not only certificates all the time, but in some cases, with the mentality of some olden ways of running companies, they expect you to have a certificates as a preliminary screening. But end of the day, it's not only about certificates, right? It's all it's about continuous learning. Whether you learn to get certificates or whether you learn not to get certificates, you have to develop your continuous learning skills. So that's the third word. Future workforce. If you want to become a future workforce, you have to develop future skills and innovation through continuous learning. That is the only way. And that is what the Testoper community is all about. We all volunteers, including every one of you, we wanted to come together, we wanted to learn together, and we wanted to be successful together. And I, I sincerely recommend every one of you to contribute towards this community, not only learn to learn, but also train to learn. Like for example, Kavita here, Ram Babu here, and many other community members here, they joined before to learn. And then now they wanted to give back and whatever they learned, they wanted to come back and train, right? So that's the only way. Getting help and also giving back is the only way we all can grow together. OK, so the other two key word is people led grassroots movement. Very, very important. Why? Because there's no full time full time employees. This whole organization runs by the people like you, me and everyone. So that's why we call it as a people led grassroots movement. And it is again an open community, self-governed. It's like an open source. You're all tech guys, right? We are an open community and self-governed. 
and we have a volunteer team that we meet every every week and we plan what we need to do and we run the show and you are all welcome to join our volunteer team you, you know how to reach out to us testoper at testoper.com we have marketing volunteer team operations volunteer team programs volunteer team partner success volunteer team legal finance everything is a volunteer team everyone is volunteer to advance this organization so end of the day long story short this is our map right we want to focus on developers testers and operations experts to develop their future skills and innovations on intelligent technologies like you know different technologies ai blah 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 and also the tools and frameworks like docker and so on so that uh, it architecture and interfaces cloud dockers and so on right so that you can develop your skills you can uh, become a future workforce no matter you are uh, you know uh, underemployed or an employed intrapreneur entrepreneur and we are diverse and inclusive community so that's what the testoper community is all about i will stop here my presentation and all i wanted to let you guys know is you in testoper community we collaborate using microsoft teams what you see in the screen is the microsoft teams and the testoper codeathon is the program that we are doing now we also have lots of other programs that we do and please look at even bright we have many additional codeathon programs coming up uh, we also have an artificial intelligence master class program coming up you should look it up and we have a 5g private network meetup is coming up you should look it up and if you are interested to become an entrepreneur we have another program that's happening called testoper projects every friday you should look it up anything that you are interested please join and learn to learn and train to learn and this is the microsoft teams that we use and we collaborate using this microsoft teams on different channels for different um, reasons i sincerely recommend you to join our community join this microsoft uh, teams and then uh, you know contribute and help us to grow so the way to join this team is already i have requested um, one of the volunteer in this call to post it here all you have to do is click this whatsapp link and join this closed group of codeathon members and once you join this whatsapp group provide your first name last name and email addresses and what we will do is we'll add you into the microsoft teams after we add it in the microsoft teams you will get an email so you can you can um, you know uh, create a separate login and password clicking forgot password and then next time onwards you would be able to collaborate directly in the microsoft teams and we have close to uh, 300 plus members in the team but our effort is to really make every member to actively collaborate it's going to take some time because we are just a one year one and a half years old uh, non profit organization normally non profit organization takes time to grow but i we kindly request you to join the microsoft teams and help us to grow so with that i will hand over the session to our great presenters um, kavita as well as ram babu they will be with you for next 6 hours for not today <laughs> don't get scared uh, every hour uh, uh, saturday for next 6 saturdays so totally 6 hours that i that's what i meant they're going to be with you for next 6 hours it's an opportunity for learning from them and also you helping them to learn it's mutual like i said it's a community right it's not an it's not an university or nobody is going to rate the presenters we hate rating we don't uh, uh, you know um, appreciate accreditations and things like that so anyone is welcome to come and teach um, to learn to learn and also teach to learn with that i'll hand over it to ram babu ram babu please feel free to take it um, away from here and please guys uh, follow the instructions in the chat and um, join the community and help us to grow ram babu over to you thanks kavu uh good morning everyone so from today we are starting uh, the session uh, docker and kubernetes and uh, this program we will be covering like introduction to docker uh, what is about docker engine uh, how we can use docker compose and how we uh, map the volumes to the dockers to save the persistent data and then next we'll be having the introduction to kubernetes uh, the kubernetes installation and the cluster configuration and how we uh, what are the pods in kubernetes and how do we auto scale them so all these things we'll be covering in this 6 uh, weeks program so today today we'll be talking about uh, docker like uh, what is docker and how it is docker what is its uh, infrastructure and all we'll be talking about so today's topics it's containerization uh, so like what is containerization uh, it's nothing but just a packing of uh, all the software code uh, with uh, necessary libraries and frameworks 
and other dependencies required for the application to run. So if you can see this image, like each container, uh, example, we are running this uh, application, uh, Java-based application in Debian in a Tom using Tomcat. And in another container, uh, we are using Ubuntu and a .NET and SQL server. So each container uh, is uh, isolated from each other and it's like an individual uh, machine, but they share all the same kernel. And they uh, they work for with all the maximum, uh, all Linux distributions and even uh, supports uh, .NETs and all. Okay, uh, and here we have like a difference between virtualization and containerization. So many people be having like uh, from long, uh, we are using virtualization and people might say like, why we need containerization? Uh, containerization is like, uh, they are like uh, based on app level and uh, they, they run on the host operating system and they are isolated environment to each other. Whereas uh, in uh, virtual machines are like, they use hypervisor and each VM is like a, each machine. So it's like multiple uh, servers in a single server. Whereas it comes to containers, uh, they are like uh, containers app based and they share the same uh, kernel and but isolated to each other. So that's a major difference. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions or doubts, uh, please uh, uh, raise the hand in between so that I can uh, clear up. And uh, coming to Docker, like uh, what is Docker? Uh, it's, it's nothing but just an open source uh, containerization platform uh, for um, same packaging, deploying and running applications. Uh, developer develop your applications and uh, with its supporting components and containers. Uh, each container uh, becomes a unit for distributing and testing your application. So whenever, whenever you are ready with your container, you can uh, deploy into your uh, test environment, development environment, or production environment. You can deploy the same container uh, into multiple environments. So and. So they, they all they share they share the portable workloads. It can uh, run even in your the same content can run even run in your local laptop, or we can run in in any uh, data center or any uh, cloud providers. So they mainly rely on uh, images and containers. Uh, any questions? Yeah, so those who have questions, you can actually, uh, you know, type it in the chat. Uh, uh, you know, we can coordinate the questions as and when uh, the questions comes on the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, Rambabu, please, please proceed and yeah, take it, take it slow and easy. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Keep it, keep it going. Yeah. So basically, the Docker, uh, it's written in a Go, pro Go programming language, uh, and it takes all the advantages of Linux kernel to deliver its functionality. The Docker mainly uses uh, technology called namespaces uh, to provide the provide it to the isolated workspace called container. So when you run run a container, it actually creates a set of namespaces in the background, and they are isol uh, they are isolated to each each other uh, within the namespace. And the, the each application uh, is limited uh, to that particular that namespace, and it uh, it is restricted to that only particular namespace. In that way, they are isolated uh, separately. Okay, and uh, coming to the Docker architecture. Okay, uh, Docker uh, Docker uh, generally uses a client-server architecture. So the Docker clients, uh, the Docker client takes all the uh, build uh, building images, uh, running the images and uh, the distributing the containers, all the do Docker client takes all these things. And it, it, uh, it the Docker client can also like, it can run, daemon can run on the same machine. Both the Docker daemon and the client can coexist on the same server. Uh, or the our Docker client can even connect to a uh, remote Docker daemon and uh, execute the commands remotely. So normally, uh, 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 when they communicate to the different Docker domain, they communicate over through a REST API. Uh, so mostly they, they all, all the communication happens through the uh, REST API, the Docker client when between the Docker domain. <coughs> so uh, Docker domain, uh, uh, 
uh, you can see the image. Uh, this is the Docker host and the Docker client. The Docker daemon uh, uh, talks, talks, uh, gets the images from the builds the images and pushes to the registry and uh, gets the images from registry and uh, executes uh, like a container. So the Docker uh, Docker host provides a total environment where they all the images they run they execute all the storage everything will be provided by the Docker host and uh, the Docker registry uh, Docker Docker registry is like there are multiple registries uh, for example is a Docker Hub which is a public registry which anybody can use uh, anybody can use anybody can store their uh, public images and. Uh, uh, they also provide a private uh, registry with a paid subscription. Uh, through Docker, Docker email, uh, we can integrate uh, GitHub or uh, Bitbucket and we can push the build the images and push it to the Docker registry. And through Docker registry, we can uh, pull the images to the container uh, to the Docker daemon and uh, publish it here and start the applications. This is this is the basic basic architecture of the uh, Docker. This is the same. Uh, Lamba, will somebody raise the hand? If, if does anyone have any questions? Uh, actually, I cannot see here. Let me see. Uh, I'm on screen sharing and I cannot see the chat here. That's there okay. is no question. just just proceed. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, uh, you know, let please please continue on that. I saw someone raising the hand. Okay, uh, that's okay. Please go ahead. And 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 Kavita, maybe you can help uh, looking at the questions uh, and and answering them in between from the coordination point of view. Please proceed, Rambab. Yeah. So here we'll show you like how uh, we can install the Docker in a Ubuntu machine and uh, how we can uh, build the Docker image and how we can execute it. So let me show you like how we install it in the Ubuntu. So it's the same uh, Docker commands I've just pasted here. I'm using uh, Ubuntu. Uh, for the demo Maybe you can explain each step what it is actually doing. Yeah. So actually, I'm just uh, installing the required dependencies uh, for the Docker, and here I'm I'm getting the uh, uh, Docker GPG to validate and install. Here I'm uh, pushing all the packages to the APT of the Ubuntu so that it can get the lead, all the repositories. Uh, from uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu repository. Uh, 
and here is a command for installing the docker it installs uh, docker docker client and uh, It's weird. Still downloading from Snap. Oh, it is downloading. Maybe you can explain now. So, so what you are trying to do here is mostly the, the oh. installation mm -hmm. of the Docker and everything, right? To set up the environment. Yes. Uh, yes, Kata. Awesome. Awesome. Typically, how long does it take to download and install? Do you know? Uh, normally, it doesn't take much time, but uh, I think uh, it's slow network. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter because, yeah, you know, it, it always, ha always happens, you know, just to, it, you know, a lot of, lot of demos always fails when you wanted to present it in front of the people. That's normal, so no worries. <laughs> No worries, but at least you can uh, explain them like the, what are all the different steps that you have done to really get this uh, up and running, right? Actually, it's a pretty uh, simple process. It doesn't take much time generally uh, because I have, tried, I have done multiple uh, times like for testing of this install and so maybe it's giving some issue. So normally like how it's uh, just we need, we just update, uh, do the uh, required packages. So we just install the required packages and we, uh, we add to the APT list uh, about the Docker releases, whatever, whichever version. We just add it to the APT sources list. This is a list from which Ubuntu uh, verifies uh, from the Ubuntu uh, sources and gets the required, uh, downloads the required uh, packages and installs it. Uh, let me check. Looks 
looks like it's installed huh? installing it's installing yeah good news but all these things are open source right uh, more or less yeah. docker yeah docker is like open source we, we can be installed in ubuntu or mac okay so it's installed uh, i have a like small small sample application i will explain the uh, the next is about the docker file like how we construct docker file is nothing but it's uh, just a simple text file uh, with a list of uh, commands uh, one by one that's all so it's just like uh, just simple you can see the simple docker file here which is a uh, node node application based and uh, here's the explanation like this is the starting first line is when first when you define the base image in the docker file like example here i'm taking node it can be like ubuntu or tomcat or java whichever dot net so whichever base image we need to define it depending on the application requirement and the second one is the maintainer uh, though it's not mandatory uh, required to build the docker file but it's like uh, you know uh, just giving the uh, name like a name like uh, which one it is uh, who has built the docker or for which purpose we can maintain here this for this purpose we declare the maintainer and uh, next is the work directory location uh, it will change to the current working directory where we have all the files uh, to be copied and thing uh, and pushed to the docker image and next is the copy command uh, we are we are just copying the required json file to the docker uh, which is for the node uh, the same way we we copy all the uh, compiled libraries or jars or war files which are uh, based on the application and then next is the command uh, which uh, we build the application now we use we are using npm install to build the node application this will be run inside the container to build the image and after this uh, we are copying all the libraries uh, once the command is executed and here and the next is the inron variables we can pass um, depending on depending on the requirement we can pass multiple variables uh, we can uh, actually we can give the dollar values here and while runtime we can uh, expo ex execute them while in the uh, command line suppose i am mentioning like a dollar port here and in the command line i can say uh, any hyphen hyphen env port is equal to 8080 there i can mention or i can mention directly in the docker file this for example i am giving and the next is the main and uh, important thing is expose port uh, if you don't expose the port the docker will not be able to listen uh, like which port it has to open to the uh, uh, the docker has to listen to on it since it is a node application we are using 8080 if it is like any other java application or uh, any other dot net or any api application anything depending on the things we need to expose the port and next is the one which which will specify like uh, which command has to run on the startup so and this is the main thing so when when the uh, when we start the uh, container uh, this command will be executed and keeps it running. So once this command executed, the container will uh, will uh, go to stop mode uh, the command is executed. So the I'll show you the same here. This is a Docker file uh, which we are talking about explaining. So next is a uh, Docker command line. These are the simple basic commands which we commonly use, uh, uh, you know, in the while executing the Docker commands uh, like Docker build, verify the images, Docker run and verify, see whether which Docker are running or stop the Docker or uh, remove the Docker or remove the delete the image or verify the logs. I will show you all this uh, in the runtime now. First is we'll build that Docker image. Docker build. Uh, can you guys see my screen or it's small? So the font is little less, um, but okay, readable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah guys, uh, like I mentioned, this is a community uh, session, so feel free to ask. Uh, this is not a training session, so anybody and everybody just jump in, ask. 
and even help ram babu if he gets stuck right uh, like i mentioned it's a joint learning session feel free to uh, ask please and while he is typing that command i just want to also let you know if you consistently attend all the sessions we will also provide a certificate of attendance from the testoper community just stay for you guys um and and a reminder of all of you joining the microsoft teams following the instructions in the chat yeah. so here is a build example so i'm just uh, building the application uh, and this is just i'm giving a tag name to the image and here are the steps so it's done it it gets the uh, node image from the docker hub step there are total nine steps okay so it's uh, get downloading the image from the docker hub uh, docker actually what it does is it's maintain all the images in a layer mode so that it doesn't uh, it consumes very less space and uh, mainst maintains the application for multiple things so once right now i'm doing like node so it's down it downloading from uh, multiple image bases so they uh, act in in the docker hub they might have built this node uh, 12 version on on uh, ubuntu or any other application so what it does is uh, for ubuntu it will maintain one image id and for uh, node installations it will maintain one image id so when you say uh, from node 12 so it compiles both uh, ubuntu and the node and it pulls both and uh, saves it here so like that it will uh, save the lot of space okay so here the step 2 like uh, building application is copying each each and every command whichever we specify uh, it builds there so when i say docker images here 15 seconds ago node sample this this is just now we have built it 920 mb 15 seconds ago so now we'll execute this uh, image and this is the command for uh, starting the application and hyphen d which is like uh, executing in a daemon mode which will uh, start the content in the background hyphen p is the uh, port uh, exposing like we have uh, exposed the port uh, here in the docker file right so we need to map it to the our local host then uh, then the port will be uh, the port will be uh, when we access this port the uh, connection goes to the docker inside the docker like that we can run multiple uh, dockers with the, with changing of the different different ports So I'm giving name as a test uh, and the image name. So uh, now I've executed Docker. Since I've given the iPhone in demo mode, so it is running in the background. Now, if I want to list out like what all images are running, uh, what all containers are running in my uh, Docker, so there is a simple command called Docker ps. So it will it will show like uh, what is the image, uh, what the containers are running, and uh, from when it was created, and what is up status, and what ports it is mapping, and what is the name. This is the name which we are given while running the Docker. So if you want to see like uh, Docker, we want to see the logs of the container. docker logs test so now this this is the this is the log uh, logs which the container has generated we can simply uh, run this logs command and see like what are logs are running this will be very much useful like if you want to debug any application like uh, what are the logs you want you want to where is the error and all we can see with this the logs option okay so now it's running on 8080 10.9.9.77 yeah so uh, this is the application 
so the application is running now we can see we can use the url this is the ip of the machine not the container okay if you see uh, inspect it will give you the ip of the containers so it will uh, i will explain in the next coming sessions like how the docker's uh, ip address uh, network is done and the thing it will be it will be in the next session in detail so just to say this is the docker ip of the docker and uh, uh, what we are using is the ip of the docker um, docker host what we call so since we have uh, mapped uh, to the local uh, we have given hyphen p in the while executing right so that is what mapping it to the local host so we are mapping 8080 port of the docker container to the 8080 port of the server You need to change the name of the container, right? Yes. Test one only using. Okay, it's failed, but it's running here. Yeah. Now, if you see, there are two dockers running. Uh, one with, uh, we have exposed same image, we are running multiple times. Now, if you go to the same one, if I type 8081, it still works. So, this container and this container is it's uh, it is nowhere related to uh, uh, to this. They are self isolated. So, when we map to the local host port, I mean we are mapping this particular port to the local host, uh, and we can use we can run multiple containers. Now, if we, we earlier we executed one command which failed. Now, if we type, we'll see. Okay. If you type hyphen A, let me clear it up. Yeah. Now if you type hyphen A, it will list out all the all the containers that are running and that are uh, completed. Since we gave the wrong command, it just created and exe uh, exited. So it's okay. So yeah. And uh, we'll show you, we'll show the Docker stop command and all the things. Okay, so now I'm stopping these uh, containers. Docker stop test. Docker stop test one. Docker stop test two. Okay, now if you see Docker ps, it will it it will only show the running containers. So no no container is running right now. If you type if you want to see all the containers. Which, which are stopped, here are the, all the containers, exited 11 seconds ago, exited 17 seconds ago. This is the command to stop the Docker containers. Now we'll uh, delete the containers. Docker RM, this is the command to delete the containers. Docker RM test, test one, test two. So no containers now. And we have Docker images. So if you want to de delete, I'm, I'm deleting this image which we created. So it's all deleted. If you type Docker images, so only the node which was which we downloaded while building is is there, and the node uh, application, the sample application which we built has been deleted. The delete command. So here are the examples of the uh, delete commands. Uh, and coming to Docker Hub, earlier I was telling like <clears throat> we can push all the images to the Docker Hub, which is available publicly available uh, with free licenses for the public images. Uh, so we, we can we can uh, register to this Docker Hub and we can commit uh, or push all our images, but which, which will be accessible to publicly for everybody. If at all we want to have a, a private repository, then we need to go for a subscription based. Uh, these can be used to automatically trigger from uh, uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, 
or anything we can configure uh, jenkins or any other code code pipelines uh, which will automatically build the images and we can push it to the docker hub and from there uh, we normally uh, use it for the deploying to the applications and uh, okay earlier we got stuck uh, with the installation side there is also a uh, script based automated install which is not normally they won't suggest for in uh, production based but still if you want you can try with this installation with this uh, automated installation script you can use it if you want to uninstall you can follow these commands to uninstall it yeah uh, this is for today's session uh, please let me know if you have any doubts i can uh, clarify Uh, Rambabu, one question raised here is, uh, what's the difference between Docker Desktop and Do Docker C Community Edition? Okay, Docker Desktop is like uh, for, uh, I mean, uh, Windows and Mac uh, using in a laptop, we'll be using Docker Desktop. And coming to like uh, using in any servers and all, we use uh, Docker Community Edition. That's the only difference. Uh, uh, Container-wise, there's nothing different. So you can you, you can run the same container images in your desktop, and the same container image can be executed in the servers. Thank you, thank you, Ram Babu. Hey, uh, everyone. Uh, we, you know, we have like 26 people attending this session. I just wanted to make a kind request uh, to support the speakers by attending rest of the five sessions um, as much as that you can. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And those who wants to join the Microsoft Teams, please uh, follow the instructions in the chat. Copy it and keep it in your notepad. Otherwise, uh, you know, once you exit, uh, you might not uh, get it. Uh, so that you can join, or you can even send your email addresses, uh, first name and last name, a last name in the Microsoft Teams, so we can add you into the Microsoft chat. And I also sincerely request you all to refer your friends and colleagues to come and join us. Uh, you know, in this journey of continuous learning together. I uh, just wanted to kind of push that in as well in between. Looking forward to your continuous support, uh, not only in this program, the other programs, and also uh, training uh, you know, uh, others moving forward. So please feel free to ask any more questions. We have 12 minutes. Uh, I think it's a great session from my point of view, Rambabu. Rambu, thanks a lot. From the point of view of today, at least I understood. Uh, I know nothing about it. I understood what the Docker is. How do you create your app as an image and push it into the Docker? And how do you uh, use your um, uh, Docker registry for storing the images publicly and privately during the subscription? Those are those are really good, and I hope uh, you know the technical team really learned well. The other one I wanted to say is Wave Labs uh, is one of the uh, company uh, sponsor of Testoper uh, from volunteering and speaking opportunities as well as on uh, in-kind opportunities and so on. I just want to let you know that they are con consistently looking for. Uh, uh, new uh, recruitment opportunities. So as a support from Testoper community, I would appreciate if you are looking for any job change or anything, feel free to send your resumes to testoper at testoper.com. I would be happy to forward it to the Testoper, I mean, uh, Wave Labs to, for, the, for the future considerations and so on. Okay. All right. So there is uh, someone asking, hi, y'all, can you paste? It's already there in the Teams chat. Maybe I think you joined late. Let me repost it for you the instructions to join the Microsoft Teams. Just a minute. All right. I have reposted it for you. And uh, good question. There was a there are some questions. Let's address that right. Uh, so the first one is using Docker desktop or Docker CE. I think you answered that right, Ram Babu. Yes. yes Right. So the next question is uh, Docker desktop is not available for Linux like Windows or Mac OS. It is a bit different. I think it's like a comment. Do you want to add anything on that comment? Uh, in the Linux, we are using the uh, right now what we installed. That is what we are using in the Linux Docker's community edition, Docker CE. Okay. The next question is again, what's the difference between Docker desktop and Docker CE? There's two, time, two times the same questions. Will the slides be available in the Teams? Yes, you know, you all know where it is available in the Testoper Codathon channel. You go to the files, the slides will be available, and also the recording, we will publish it after two weeks or so in the YouTube as well, right? To encourage people to join the next session. 
All right. So no more questions. I see it in the chat. So I'll leave the floor for the people to, uh, you know, uh, unmute and ask questions. And also those who have joined newly, maybe let's use this 10 minutes to kind of uh, introduce yourself as well, right? Uh, let's create that uh, good uh, environment uh, for, for this session. So I want to start with asking Alejandro to, to unmute and uh, introduce himself. Alejandro, go ahead. Mm, Alejandro, can you hear us? No. Fabina, do you want to introduce yourself to the team? Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, just introduce yourself. What do you do? Uh, yeah, I'm a junior web developer and I'm learning Docker. Um, I'm really interested in Docker. Uh, thanks for the talk. It was really interesting. Thank you. Looking forward to your uh, continuous attendance for the rest of the five sessions. Let's go to Laura. Alejandro, feel free to unmute and introduce yourself. Yeah. And, and in your introduction, please tell where are you from as well, OK? Laura, Iona. Yeah, yeah, hey. Gaurav here. Yeah. So I'm from Bangalore, uh, working as a software developer in my lips. All right. And your resume is if you guys are looking for a job, that's good. Let's go to Iona. Jenny Henderson. Yep. Hi everyone. Um, I'm tuning in from South Africa. I'm a, a software trainer as well as a software test analyst uh, for a big uh, um, software company in South Africa. Very informative session. I'm just starting out with all of the IT, Docker, Kubernetes, um, Azure, all of those things. This is really you know, what I wanted to do is I want to really get connected with you, you know, and also with everyone else, right? So I'm just sending my LinkedIn in the chat. Feel free to send me the invite. I would be happy to um, be connected with every one of you. All right, Jenny, Jose, Jose, you're not new, but I'll let you also to introduce again. Jenny, Jose, Naga, Shushma. No, shy. OK, <laughs> all right. Uh, Pratay uh, Edupati. Ratna Kumar. Senji Chu. Watnuri Santosh Kumar. Yeah, go ahead, Ram Babu. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone? Introductions. All right. <laughs> Looks like uh, uh, they need to be trained uh, next time to unmute and speak. Yeah. So this so, is a community, like I mentioned, this is a community, right? So it's not a training. So feel free to always uh, jump in and talk. Yeah, go ahead, Ram Babu. Yeah. So I'll just give a brief like about next session. Uh, next session, we'll uh, we'll be talking more about uh, more deeply about uh, Docker, uh, Docker engine, and uh, how we map the Docker volumes. And uh, there is another client like how we are using Docker. There is another client called Docker Compose, uh, which we can uh, use like multiple containers to bind and use it. So it's a very pretty, uh, very much useful tool, Docker Compose, where if you want to run the applications uh, based on Docker's in the production or anything. So we'll be talking more on those tools in the next session, more deeply on that, about uh, Docker networking, uh, how the how the uh, containers work, uh, between communicate between each other. So we'll be talking all about all these things in the next session. Really good. So Ram Babu, can you do me a favor, like you know, just uh, like one simple statement. Uh, what did you train today, and what you are planning to train for the next week? What I can also do is I can send out to all the registrants of this program. This is what they can expect uh, from the next week onwards. Next week session, Saturday, yeah. same time at ten o'clock. Yeah, I'll I'll send it to you. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so it's really good. Uh, thanks, Kavita and Ram Babu, for pulling this all together. I don't see any further questions. Uh, unless uh, okay, Alejandro said, says he, he's from Brazil. Yeah, this is really good. I'm starting in the DevOps world and starting using Docker and Kubernetes. Thank you for joining, Alejandro. 
uh yeah you know i sent my linkedin invite please feel free to uh, connect with me uh, you guys have it there and also uh, yeah please do that so um giving the given given the situation i think uh, you know we are 5 minutes early um so i probably would like to give you back 5 minutes of your time uh, today saturday and thanks for joining and i'm looking forward every one of you to join the next session and benefit from this um, continuous learning program uh, that that we are all uh, uh, learning together with that uh, i'd like to close the session and leave the final words to ram babu and kavita if they wanted to say something um, and then we are good to go go ahead ram babu and kavita uh, honor of closing the session uh thanks everybody thanks for joining hope uh, we'll we'll have uh, more details and we can answer more questions of yours uh, in the coming sessions yeah 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 Th thank you ram babu thank you kavit uh, uh, the uh, uh, next session will be really interesting uh, because we will get to know how real time uh, we'll be able to use the majors and uh, uh, do the uh, development and uh, use it for uh, uh, deployments so it will be an inter interesting session uh, so we will we'll all attend thank you thank you very very much you guys have a wonderful day um If you're looking for a job, send your resumes. You never know; in future, there may be some opportunities to um, you guys work uh, with Wave Labs. With that, let's close the session. Thank you all. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. Talk to you all, and see you all next week. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good day. So, Alejandro, I know that you asked the question. So, those who wants to leave, they can leave. Alejandro, for you, uh, there is a chat, right? There is a WhatsApp group. You can join and send your first name, last name, and email address. We will add you into the Microsoft Teams. Okay. I know your your uh, speaker doesn't work. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, Alejandro. So, uh, I don't understand. How did you say? How can I join to the group? So there is a chat. You look at the chat. Let me share the screen. Look at the chat window of today's session, right? there is a steps given right all are requested to join teams first step join the whatsapp group provide your first name last name alternatively you can also provide your first name last name in your in email address in the microsoft teams then we will add you into the account of testoper account then you will get an email then you can use your email address and then reset the password then you will be able to log in into the microsoft teams oh i think yeah, i can't see this message but anyway I write you from LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. So you can you can yeah do that in LinkedIn. Yeah. That's so right. To see that message. Not sure why you are not able to see that message. Everyone is able to see it, right? You can see the chat, right? Uh, yeah. You have typed it in the chat. So just go up a little bit. You should see it. I found it. I found it. Okay. Perfect. Copy it and uh, keep it in your notepad before you exit the Teams because after because you don't have an account. I'm do it. Yeah. Sure. All right guys take care then Ram Babu Kavita take care bye 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 bye